Hello everyone and welcome to another publication, if you like, in the Pass Forward History series where we have international conversations about history education. Before I go on and, and begin to discuss my main publication, if you like, I just wanted to quickly tell you a little bit about myself. So my name is Afia Ahmed Chowdhury. I am a Deputy Head of History in South London and a doctoral student at the University of Oxford, uh, researching into the classroom experience and identity formation of British Muslims with a specific focus on school history. So just an overview of what I'm going to be discussing. Uh, I'm going to be looking at the purpose of school history, how Muslims fit into the national British narrative, as I just mentioned, and then sort of decolonizing the curriculum. So what is the purpose of school history? So though noble in intent, there remains a clear discrepancy in consistency of theory and application of school history. Professor Stephen Levasque argues that school history lays foundations for building a genuine democratic society and contextualizes human activity over time, which I guess, given the current state of global politics, is a vital foundation to lay. Historian and philosopher John Slater corroborated the, this idea with the ex extrinsic purpose um, of, of school history, which he argues gives students the ability to develop empathic understanding of people from different times and cultures. So he kind of shifts the um, focus away from one studying themselves to us studying others so that we are able to identify and understand. However, husbands et al and other uh, uh, scholars noted that even though educators are generally firm on their understanding of what historical knowledge and skills they believe students need, there remains little, I guess, professional consensus on what these terms actually mean. So therefore, even though there is um, uh, there may be contention as to what the purpose of school history should be. There is general agreement among scholars as to what it should not be. And that is a singular narrative written and constructed with the aim of inculcating in students a, a feeling of civic attachment and a great story, uh, invariably nationally focused, incidentally white, male and heterosexual, and at the expense of others. Instead, history education should be um, emancipatory. It should allow students to doubt, to criticize and examine what they are presented with, um, and continually make room for a plurality of voices and perspectives. The question then becomes that at a time when we are having these discussions within the sector, um, and when there is all this openness about, you know, the importance of, of teaching a varied narrative and, and, and a rigorous kind of knowledge and presenting students with that why and, and especially when muslims have also become a focal point of, of political discourse why are thousands of muslim students still feeling rootless this is even more pressing when we consider the num british muslims in numbers you know they make up 4.4 percent of the population boasting numbers of over 4 million and they concentrated in, in in cities like london and up and up north so my surprise then at the absence of urgency and the reductive discussions of right versus left traditional versus progressive uh, especially in relation to the secondary curriculum with you know that many change makers have resu resulted to in, in indulging in serves as proof that perhaps a myth of diversity will remain as uh, you know as much simply a myth now i know many will instantly purport that actually your your experience does not reflect the experience of other british muslim students thousands do well at gcse history which undoubtedly they do but that's not the point research has illustrated the disillusionment with school history and the difference in degree outcomes too in 2017 the social mobility commission published a report highlighting the experiences of muslims in the labor market and um it noted how muslim students in schools found that teachers had stereotypically or low expectations of them. This is how they felt. And they also felt there were insufficient Muslim teachers and role models, both within schools and more broadly. The lack of awareness within communities of, of Muslim um, uh, role models, both in the past and in modern day, uh, is an historical oversight. And I think it's something which can be rectified through school history. Um, in their paper, uh, The History Curriculum and its Personal Connection to Students from Minority Ethnic Backgrounds, 
Harris and Reynolds noted the importance of school history in fostering social cohesion and developing a sense of identity. However, their research indicated that most students from minority ethnic backgrounds felt disillusioned with history as they did not see themselves repre represented in the history curriculum at all that was taught in schools. More recently, the Islam on Campus report um, highlighted how Muslim students face discrimination at all levels of um, their educational career. The report argues that Muslim students are more likely than other uh, other students from uh, from other faith backgrounds um, that to see religion as core to their identity. And this reinforces the need to explore, I guess, Muslim identity in schools and 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 how the, I guess the the intensity of Islamic identity, which is corroborated in Matthew Wilkinson's research into Muslim boys and school history. Additionally, sort of those who view Islam and Muslims in a negative light have conceded to being heavily influenced by media assumptions and rhetoric around the Muslim community. You know, this constant positioning of, of Muslim students as susceptible to extremist thought and terrorist activity has led students to naturally feel that they are being viewed through a securitized lens. Um, and whilst you're not being, uh, you know, you, you don't see yourself in the school curriculum, you don't see any role models in the past or in the, or in the present that you feel you can I guess look up to or are of an attainable uh, standard because they have your I guess background and that trajectory it can become very very hard and what ensues in, is an identity crisis um, among a number of, of young Muslims um, so when it comes to Muslims in Britain what do we even know um, so I've, I've, I've mentioned this um, a few times before, but since the 19th century, the discourse around Islamic history has presupposed a deficit model, that there is something inherent within the Islamic culture itself um, that has made it inferior, inferior either momentarily or intrinsically um, to the West, specifically the Western British um, context. Both academic and popular discourse around the history of Islam and its place in Britain have been dominated by two central questions. What went wrong and why are they here? The first question was initially posed by reformers like Muhammad Abdul and Rifa al zahtawi so you are free to research this in your own time, who queried basically how did it come to this? And they were attempting to understand why the Ali and Ottoman dynasties were so weak in the face of European imperialism. And in the 1990s, uh, Europeans, most notably Bernard Lewis, used the supposed deficits of Islamic culture to propose this clash of civilizations rhetoric, which we see kind of happening until until today. Um, so this saw to an idea which an irredeemably backwards Eastern other was uh, to be vanquished by a more enlightened and glorious West. This question obviously once raised, so sort of refused to go away um, and, and, and you see it propounded day after day in, in, in socio-political discourse. The second question of why are they over here, although most crudely expressed in Britain by the far right, is foundational to much of the discourse around the place of Islam in British society, equally within the diaspora and more broadly. So both were brought together by the September 11th attacks, which prompted not only massive violence against Muslims, um, but I guess uh, brought questions and an intensifying discourse around what Muslims in the West are with questions of their loyalty, which was again heightened by media, you know, scare stories. And then uh, accordingly, the discussion became far more urgent and there is now a renewed interest in the history of Muslims in Britain. So throughout, though the history of Muslims in Britain has been refracted through a negative lens um, that questions their general belonging, their actual contributions and place in society is an established and decades old reality. When, when I was initially thinking this through, I decided to make a list of, of Muslims in numbers and I thought about Muslims in teaching, Muslims in business, Muslims in charities, Muslims, Muslims in academia, Muslim thinkers and scientists, Muslims in politics, Muslims in the NHS and the numbers astounded me and the Muslim Council of Britain has a breakdown and I'll link it as well but this exercise whilst it did make me feel pretty proud of, of the Muslim community I did feel like I was dehumanizing us um, I felt like I was claiming that only when we were fulfilling the role of, of model minorities were we worth recognizing and respecting as part of a broader national narrative. And that's some, something about that just doesn't sit right with me because why are we not being allowed to, I guess, exist 
as mediocrity. The place of, of, of Islam in the West has never been more critical and the thorough understanding of Islam and Islamic history has never been more essential in the classroom. As a history teacher in South London, serving a large number of Muslim students, the quest has sort of birthed concerns around the purposes of school history, curriculum diversity, um, and, and the limited scope of the school curriculum. And I guess I'm trying to argue that we need to shift the focus onto what knowledge ought to be taught in schools and how we can put forward balanced narratives that do not seek to erase the contributions of entire civilizations. And, and these questions have de been debated in Britain since the 19th century. Um, and, and the answer to a child's position and belonging in schools um, was most clearly articulated in the Bullock Report of 1975, which stated no child should be expected to cast off the language and culture of the home as he crosses the school threshold, nor to live and act as though home and school represent two totally separate and different cultures which have to be kept firmly apart. So, so how does this all link then to teaching Islamic history? Why should we teach it? Well, we teach about Britain's colonial endeavours, we speak about imperial expansion and the brilliance of Elizabeth I, so why not? Especially given how Muslims are intrinsically tied to these periods, be that Queen Elizabeth's expansion efforts or Queen Victoria's endeavours in India. Um, the history of Islam in Britain dates as far back as the medieval period, around 150 years after the death of the Prophet Muhammad. From there, colonial expansion saw to an explosion and introduction of new faiths and cultures and as a result we actually had a number of Victorian and, and, and Edwardian conversions for example William Henry uh, um, uh, Abdullah Quilliam he was a notable convert because of his desire and zeal to spread Islam. So Muslims in Britain today uh, started off as sailors sort of arriving from India as part of the East India Company recruitment efforts and this latest sort of uh, uh, Bangladeshis coming over and working at restaurants with records as, as early as 1837. Uh, and then when you had a growing demand of workers in ports and ships, you had Muslims from Egypt and Yemen start to arrive. And naturally, these Muslims began to set up their own communities and you can see these dotted all around the UK. So the settlement patterns also reflect post-colonial demands for industrial trade and skills of migrants which means that British Muslim communities are overwhelmingly urban and overwhelmingly there. So the economic migration of former colonial and commonwealth workers is the primary element in the history of creating the British Muslim identity, undermining the present day notion that Muslims are foreigners and they don't have uh, a right to be included in our school curriculums and, and they have not integrated into British Muslim society. And I think there is this deep, deep fear of what will happen if we begin to teach or put forward these post-colonial narratives? What happens when we begin to give these alternative realities to our students? Actually presenting students with a multitude of histories, it adds rigor, it adds criticality, it provides balanced uh, you know, narratives and it's in line with those reforms actually of a knowledge rich curriculum because without having an expansive knowledge base on what on what are you basing your arguments and your judgments so i think above all else my question is this why are we so afraid to teach and, and and why are we afraid of critical historical thinking why do we shy away from presenting the good the bad the ugly why do we revert to culture wars and conspiracy theories of plots to take over the education system. Why do we not recognize that whilst we debate the semantics, it is the students we teach who face the brunt of these decisions and these discussions, not us. So I guess my argument overall is that there is a purpose of school history and that purpose is to ensure that students walk away with a critical and balanced understanding of Britain's national and international uh, legacy. The purpose also believes that history should not be at the expense of others. It should not be a singular narrative. It should not be one great story. It should be a balanced narrative. This is something we should try to be doing to allow students to have this place so that history becomes a shared human historical experience. And I think I've clearly articulated, I hope, how Muslims fit into this narrative and how they are a very intrinsic part of Britain's national narrative and why then 
presenting these post-colonial narratives and these, these migration patterns and um, I guess Britain's involvement with Muslims from all over the world um, will only seek to add to our current uh, history education as opposed to taking away from it or, you know, uh, I guess, or at the expense of traditional knowledge. So I hope that has been helpful. Thank you so much. And I really look forward to having um, the discussion on Twitter with you soon. Take care.